as I said, um, we're good, tonight we're going to talk about dugout remediation. Okay, so uh, I'm Lynn Melvin. I own Clean Water Pro. I have um, I've been in business for over twelve years now, and I love talking about water. Uh, it's my passion. Um, our business has grown into quite a uh, robust company where you know we're working with water all the time, and uh, yeah, I love it. So tonight we're going to talk about just a little bit about who Clean Water Pro is. We're going to go over the typical dugout um, or swim pond type problems. And then we're going to talk about some of the solutions that we have, as well as uh, just touch on some of the work uh, that we've done in the past. And um, as we're going through this presentation, feel free to just type in the questions box, uh, any questions that you might have. And at the end, I'll, um, I'll try and take some time to, to answer those. So let's get into it. Um, so I'm based in Carmen, Manitoba. We have a small retail front uh, to our store. Uh, in the back are our offices and our lab where we do a lot of our, um, our assessing and, and um, behind the scenes type work. Um, our environmental staff, they're out um, assessing ponds, treating ponds and things like that all summer long. We work with uh, city retention ponds, dugouts, livestock ponds, large lakes, lagoons. Um, so really any kind of standing water, um, we, we, we typically will deal with. We don't do much with, uh, with ground, ground water, but uh, anything above the ground is uh, fair game for us. We're very much a scientifically based company, which means we, we assess the body of water. We look at the water chemistry, the, the little critters on the bottom, the, the riparian zone around the pond to try and get a really, um, a bit, the big picture of what's happening in that pond and why. We have an incredible amount of uh, liability insurance, um, which allows us to work with water uh, here in, uh, uh, in Canada. And we're a safe work certified company, which means um, not only do we adhere to all the rules and regulations, but we go above and beyond. So um, we're really proud of that designation. And uh, we know that we're, we're keeping our employees safe, which is, is very important to us. So how is your pond used? Um, a lot of people use it for recreation, whether it's swimming, or maybe they have trout in there. Um, irrigation. Some dugouts are used for, for water in the house, for flushing toilets or showering and things like that. And then of course, farm dugouts where the livestock can either access it to drink or the water is pumped up for them to, to have uh, fresh water to drink as well. So there's many uses for those dugouts, but ultimately the problems that they experience are the same. So submerged weeds, you can see on the top left, is uh, a really big complaint that we have. Um, duckweed, we'll kind of talk about what that is a little bit later. The nutrient load. Um, so that little blue, the blue water in that vial there. Um, we look at the nutrients in the water to see how much is uh, in there. Um, and then algae. We, uh, algae is a, is a big one as well. So let's talk about algae. Um, I, I love algae, it's, it's really cool. It comes in so many, it, there's so many species out there and it comes in so many different colors and textures and things like that. And I think it's really cool. So on the left there, you'll see that black algae uh, and that little green blob on top of it is uh, green uh, uh, string algae, uh, filamentous algae. The picture to the right is the red algae. Now that pond had, um, it looked like somebody dumped red paint on it. Red algae is here in Manitoba for sure. And uh, it's kind of startling when you do see it. Um, the little one in the, in the, on the bottom there on the left is blue green algae. Now blue green algae, it's a cyanobacteria. That one's a particular concern, mainly because 
uh, it can have toxins associated with it. So if that water or those toxins are ingested, you can either become very, very sick or you might even die from it. There's many, you know, livestock or animals, pets and things like that, that haven't ingested it and, and have passed away in recent years. So, you know, that one we kind of really want to keep an eye on for sure. String algae, that's very common. See a lot of, uh, a lot of that one. So if you kind of took a stick and grabbed it, like it looks kind of green and frothy, but when you pull it up, it's kind of, it'll come out with long strings and things like that. And then the one to the right is just uh, green algae. So it's, it's quite green right through the, the water there. And that's just a few of the different species that are out there, but I thought they were kind of cool. Now, duckweed. Duckweed is often confused. Uh, um, a lot of people think it's algae and from a distance, it certainly looks like algae. It's green and your pond can turn green overnight. It's incredible how fast this little plant will grow. And if you can see on the bottom left, it's actually a tiny, tiny little leaf with a little root system on it, but it gets super thick and it can overtake your pond and it's really difficult to get it under control. Um, Duckweed doesn't like movement and um, if you can reduce the nutrients and get a lot of movement in there, you can get it under control, but it does take quite a bit of time, like at least one to two years to kind of get, get it knocked back. And um, the more movement, the more aeration that you can put in there, the better. And then, of course, you have to stick to a, uh, a treatment plan that's reducing the phosphorus and, and the other nutrients and the organics in the water to help starve it out. And that is the best way to get rid of duckweed. Um, but, you know, it, it does take a lot of time and patience to do so. Now, aquatic weeds. Uh, so aquatic weeds are usually growing on fr from the bottom. And the reason they take hold is because the muck accumulates on the bottom. So when you have a layer of muck on the bottom, it makes a perfect root bed for the submerged weeds to grow. And then they grow, they die, and then it starts adding to that whole uh, snowball effect, I guess, basically, where you get more and more muck on the, on the bottom. And then, um, so in the center there, one of our guys is going, going out to see how much muck there is. He's, he's uh, doing some testing there. And then the two young ladies on the right, they're, um, they're IDing what type of aquatic weeds are in the water. And the reason we wanna know that is um, some species are not, you know, uh, are not that bad, others are invasive. So we wanna know exactly what's growing in there and, uh, you know, so that we can make um, educated, um, I can't talk tonight, educated uh, recommendations on what you need to do to, to get it under control. Now, dissolved oxygen is super important for a body of water, especially as they age, because they use more and more oxygen. And it's um, the reason being, when you have a pond that's not aerated, there will be a thermocline that develops in it. And a thermocline is kind of like an invisible, um, it, it, it's an invisible line between the top and the bottom, and it can move up and down that, that water column. And if you've ever jumped into a lake or a pond, and then it's been cold on the bottom and warm on the top, that's a thermocline. And what it means is, so that thermocline, it holds those gases in the bottom. So as things are kind of, you know, degrading and releasing the gas, it's stuck down there. It can't, it can't get out. And, and a lot of times it's anoxic, there's no oxygen down there. And then if there is oxygen entering from the top from wave action and things like that, that oxygen can't penetrate through that uh, thermocline. So it kind of, it it keeps it kind of divided, I guess. So the water on top will be warmer the, and the water on the bottom will be cooler and, and more uh, have less oxygen in it. Okay, so some of the treatments that we would recommend is um, 
the beneficial bacteria, and the beneficial bacteria are environmentally friendly. And what they do, they consume the nutrients in the water, uh, the organics, and they help to clarify the water as well. Pond dye is useful because it slows down the aquatic growth. It, um, you know, your algae and your aquatic weeds, they need sunlight to grow. So if you put some dye in there, that helps to slow that growth down. The other one that we really like is EcoBoost. Now EcoBoost is, um, it's a booster for beneficial bacteria. So it has micronutrients in it that helps the bacteria to work better, but it also has a binding agent that um, prevents the phosphorus from being uh, utilized by the LJ or aquatic weeds. So that using the dye, the beneficial bacteria and the EcoBoost is a really good combination to get that LJ um, under control within your pond and, and your weeds as well. So the other thing uh, that you really need to have is aeration. So there's two forms of aeration. There's floating fountain aeration and there's fine bubble subsurface aeration. Now floating fountain aeration, it's beautiful. It looks really, really nice. But if it's a deeper pond, it's maybe not like if you're looking to really tr truly improve that body of water, then you're better to go with a subsurface aeration. Um, but if your pond's already in really good condition and you're just looking for something really beautiful to look at, like having that nice spray pattern, maybe putting some lights out there, then great, that's, that's great to go with a floating fountain because it does offer some aeration. It's just not as efficient as uh, a fine bubble aeration because you can see that it just draws from, you know, two or three, four feet around it and then out to the sides a little bit, but it's really not getting to the bottom. It's not breaking up that thermocline. On the right, you can see that this pond on the left, it's not aerated, on the right it is. So the bubbler sits right on the bottom, the diffuser plate sits right on the bottom. The air enters the water column, those little bubbles are banging into each other and there's some dissolved oxygen entering. And then when it hits the surface, that's when a lot of the dissolved oxygen enters. And because it's bubbling up, it's gonna come back down again. So it's circling, circulating that oxygen from top to bottom. So once you get more oxygen in there, all your natural processes start to speed up, your bacteria works a lot faster, it starts to eat away at that muck and the, the organics in there. Um, and it just, it's much healthier and you'll, you'll see a lot more um, biodiversity come, come up and it's, it's, it's quite amazing how, um, what a positive impact that aeration can have on a body of water, especially when it's eutrophic meaning that it has a lot of uh, nutrients in it. So as I mentioned, like aeration is quite beautiful. On the left there, you can see a couple of uh, the systems um, and you can put lights on them. There's colored lights and things like that. And then the bottom middle one and, and on the right is the fine bubble aeration. So on that diffuser plate, the air comes out 360 degrees around each tube, which is important. The design of that plate is really important, way more so than what the compressor is, because the way it's designed, it's actually in training water right from that pond, or right from the mud water interface at the bottom of that pond. So it's dragging everything up to the surface and bringing oxygen right back down to the bottom. Some of the other designs on the market we're not so excited about because they're they're missing out, they're probably leaving like a, a one foot thermocline at the bottom, which isn't all that great. Um, because a lot of times we wanna get that oxygen down there to start working on the, the weed growth and, and things like that as well, and get that muck level down. Uh, we have some really great tools that work super well, especially if you have a, a pond that's quite weedy and you're trying to get ahead of it. Um, we have cutters. Uh, so you throw the cutter out there, you drag it back, it slices everything off. Then we have a rake that you can also throw into the water and it drags all the weeds out that you've already cut. And that middle one, we're super excited about that. That's a muck razor. It's kind of like an underwater tiller, 
Uh, so it just rolls along the bottom. It really grinds up that muck and the weed, the roots in the bottom. So when you combine that with our pelleted form of bacteria, um, it helps to mix it around and it, it can clean up a beach in no time at all. It's a, it's a really fantastic tool. And it weighs, I think it's about 20 pounds or so. So it's got some weight to it, but it's not so heavy that it's impossible to move. So we're super excited about the muck razor. So we'll just touch on some of the projects that we've worked on in the past. So these uh, here are some, um, they're lakes that, uh, for fisheries, um, because they have, um, they're stock lakes and they wanna make sure that the fish overwinter well. And to do so, it's important to have some aeration put in there. So keeping an open area of water where it's being aerated, it helps uh, to overwinter those fish. So that's uh, some of the projects that we work on. And then, uh, these are city retention ponds. So the one on the left, uh, it was covered in string algae. It was in pretty tough shape. Um, so we moved in and, and used our different treatments, our um, beneficial bacterias. And within a couple of weeks, we had it cleared up. Um, this next one, this one was a little more difficult. It was duckweed. And that took about a season and a half to get it cleaned up. It was in pretty rough shape. Um, it was very, very thick when we started. And just, you know, with aeration and nutrient reduction, we, we got it under control. These here, um, this is just a couple of the community swim ponds that we've worked with. Um, there's different campgrounds and things like that that we, we work with as well. But these ones, um, the one on the left is in Plum Coulee, Manitoba, and it's about a four acre pond. Uh, when they called us, they said, you know, it's pretty rough shape. Nobody wants to swim in here. And now that beach is busy and humming all summer long. Their campground's full. They have people coming in and really enjoying the water. And on the right hand side, that's in Rest in Manitoba. And, and believe it or not, uh, that pond there was a sloop. Uh, so they dredged it out, they put down some geotextiles, some sand and uh, gravel and, and um, made a nice design there. We have aeration, we have a fountain, and we have bacteria that we put in there and it, it keeps it beautiful all summer long. It's crystal clear, it looks really good. So that's um, our presentation tonight. I know it's uh, kind of quick, but I'm, you know, I'm always happy to talk to anybody about, about their pond. Um, so we basically, we just ran through an introduction about who we are and what, what, uh, what we do at Clean Water Pro. Uh, we talked about some of the typical problems that you see in dugouts. We talked about the solutions and some. So if you have any gins and you can type that into the bar.